Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be revisiting that copy of Windows Vista Ultimate DSP Alpha Plus Edition that if you have no idea what this is, we unboxed it in a recent video on the channel. And I mentioned in that video, if you can't tell, this is a Japanese copy of Windows Vista. And I had mentioned towards the end uh, about maybe installing this on a computer and I was wondering if you guys would even want to see that. And a couple of you guys said, yeah, we want to see you install this, just like that French Windows NT video. So that is what we're going to be doing here on the Dell Latitude D610. And the goal, to add a little bit of a challenge to this, is to do this without using any sort of translation tool whatsoever. Google Translate, we're not going to use it. We're going to see if I can get through this setup process. So it's really just going to be a test of how well that I know the Windows Vista installer and what all the prompts are going to be asking me. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and pop in our Windows Vista Ultimate DVD that we've got right here. We're going to pop that into the Dell Latitude D610's DVD drive and we will get right on with it. Now we are on Windows XP here. I just have changed the desktop wallpaper and the visual style to Windows Classic just to change it up a bit because we always have Bliss and Luna. And of course the installer has popped up here and we're just gonna go with install now. This is all in English so far, so that's great. And actually, uh, <laughs> not really reassuring and please wait is in english as well so yeah that so far um <laughs> definitely not much of a challenge and it's not in japanese at all yeah i guess it just figures out what language your system is in and just uses that yeah we should boot off the cd that's that's what we should do because then it's not going to be able to pull a, a system language from anywhere so let's go to that boot menu and we'll boot off the CD. Hey, there we go, look at that. So everything is in Japanese from this point forward. So yeah, we're not gonna be able to do the upgrade because you have to boot into your existing Windows install and start the process from there. But that just feels kind of like cheating because that's, you know, the entire like first portion of the setup and everything would be in English. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So that's why I just booted off the CD here. So we'll have to do a clean install, which is fine. And it looks like we have a fourth option here, which you don't normally have on an English copy. You got one option here. I don't know what that says. This I'm guessing is probably the language selection this i have no idea what that is i guess i guess keyboard layout microsoft ime i don't know what that is but i see azer t us we definitely want to make sure the keyboard layout or do we want to change the keyboard layout well japan uses a qwerty based layout because i have a japanese keyboard from that playstation 2 that i imported from japan that i checked out in this video where we installed linux on it yeah pretty cool and this right here i guess your key selection maybe 101 102 106 109 we're just going to go with the default options and click on next and then install and this is easy it's the product key we got that entered in here's the license agreement which is your pretty standard stuff so we have to agree and click next and you see upgrade is disabled because we haven't booted into our existing windows install so we're going with custom but let's click on here to get our options and we're just going to format and click on ok and there we go so now we just got to play the waiting game And we're restarting and our resolution has changed. So now we're at the user account creation screen. So I'm going to put in my name and then, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what these other options are. This I know for sure is the name. This should be organization. But what are these two extra options? Well, let's just pick a photo here. We'll go with this one and we'll hit next. Okay, so it doesn't require any of those other options, so that's great. We'll just name this Japan underscore Vista. We can't do underscore, let's do Japan Vista, that's fine. And we'll pick, oh, let's see, this as the background. And I know this top option is get updates, go online and use recommended settings and date and time. So it's got GMT plus nine selected, which is Japan's time zone 
and we'll just go with let's see does it have it uh, correct yes it does that says thank you because i know it says thank you in the english version so we'll close out of that and now we play the waiting game again And it looks like our sound driver is not working because it should have played the startup sound there. But we are logging in. It looks like we have some extra options down here at the bottom left. I assume those are input related. And here we are on the desktop and it looks like we've got this extra bar down here in the system tray. But first, a little change in scenery. Yeah, I figured it'd be a little bit easier to do this portion of the video in a virtual machine, so here we are in a virtual machine. And here is that input method editor that I was talking about. I had never used this before. I messed around with it a bit off camera just to familiarize myself with it. And what we're gonna do is enter some Japanese text in a minute here, and I'll just show you how it works. So yeah, you can see you can move this around wherever you want on the screen, which is very useful. If you have like a window over here, you wanna have this right at the top or the bottom of the window, or you can even put it in the system tray. But yeah, so entering Japanese text on a computer is a bit of an interesting process. So we're just gonna open up right here and I'll show you what I mean. There are a couple of ways to input Japanese characters on computers, but the one that I'm going to kind of demo here today is actually typing out Japanese words in Romaji, which is the romanization of the Japanese language, and then having the input method editor here or a similar program if you're on another operating system, translate that into katakana hiragana or kanji characters and it's very intuitive how it works so right now i've got it set to the latin script option so if i type out michael it's just going to appear as michael let me just make the text a little bit larger here so you can see much better so there it is michael uh there's also an option for wider spaced um latin script that would be this one right here so you see that a grows to be a little bit larger now if i type out michael you see it's much wider it's in a wider font you also have the same thing with katakana so if I go uh, right here, this I believe is the, uh, yeah, this is the wider spacing. And then you've got this option right here, which is, uh, or not this option, this one, which is the shorter spacing. It actually, this down here translates to half width katakana. This is half width alphanumerical. This is full width alphanumerical, full width katakana and hiragana. So yeah, I used Google Translate a little bit to cheat here, uh, though you can see from like the H and K that this is corresponding to hiragana, this is katakana. So it kind of gives that away for you there if you, if you didn't know. But I figured, you know, we're done with the installation challenge, so we can use Google Translate again right it, it, it's no problem so let's say i want to type out my name in japanese well to do that i'd have to select katakana because michael is a non-japanese word and now what i have to do is type out michael in romaji m-a-i-k-e-r-u and when I do that, it just automatically inputs the katakana. So there it is. Now you see this dotted line under here. When I press space, it'll change to a solid line. And if I press enter, it will pretty much confirm that that's the, the character selection that you want. And I can just go on typing again, you know, whatever I want. But if I go back here, so let me just start from the beginning and type out M-A-I-K-E-R-U. And then I press space and then I press space again it will then come up and give me the option to select katakana or hiragana. So this is Michael in hiragana, which I didn't even know that translated the hiragana. Somebody who speaks Japanese in the comments will probably be able to explain. All I know is this is not Michael in Japanese. So I'm gonna have to select katakana here. Now I'm back to katakana. Now, obviously having to switch down here, go down in this menu every single time and switch between, like if you were typing a document that had both Japanese and English characters in it. Well, you don't wanna have to constantly go down here and switch. So what you can do is press alt tilde, which is the key underneath escape or tilde, however you wanna say it. And that, uh, you can see it changes this here. So now I'm in the Latin script. I can do it again. And now I'm back in Katakana. So now if, if I swap here, I can just, you know, go and type out Michael MJD, whatever. And then if I want to swap back to Katakana, I can do that and then spell out Mikeadu once again. Now it is worth noting that you can change this to Hiragana. 
and have hiragana basically be the priority, but you can still change it to katakana when you type out the word. So now if I were to go back here and type out the same thing, M-A-I-K-E-R-U, it'll spell it out in hiragana, but then I can just do space twice, switch it to katakana and continue on. But whatever option you have selected last when you switch and press alt tilde to switch to the Latin script, that's the option that will change back into when you press alt tilde again. So there it is. Now I'm back in hiragana. If I change this to katakana and swap and then swap back, it'll be katakana. So yeah, that's a brief little demo of this. It's not, this is not an in-depth thing whatsoever because I, <laughs> I don't speak Japanese. I've said that like every, in every single video where I uh, where I talk about Japanese stuff. So uh, I don't have a lot of experience with using this, but it's pretty cool. And you can also draw out characters as well if you open this up. Uh, you can actually draw out the characters in this box here. So if I want to try an attempt to spell out Maikadu in Katakana, this is probably not going to show up at all. Um, yeah, that, that just that just looks like a one that's slanted. Yeah, that's a brief little demo of uh, this neat little thing here. I thought it was I uh, thought it was pretty cool, and I figured it'd be worth talking about. So, there you go. Yeah, that is uh, that is this Japanese copy of Windows Vista finally installed. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.